Happy Sunshine family, Lunacy is back here. I've been working on how I'm going to organize my SEOP series. And you'll remember that SEOP, that stands for Self-Author Your Own Perception. Now there are four main steps that I use to author my own perception. And these are just milestones that I find myself along the journey of perception authorship. I first, I start out with do. This stands for direct observation. When I directly observe something from a place of knowing that flies in the face of a perception that I'm currently holding, then I am in the seeing phase. See, I sense an emotional experience somewhere inside me Emotions rise up because I'm seeing things that don't mesh with my view of reality. And that always means that uh, I don't have an accurate view of reality and I need to reauthor my perception. It's hard work and it brings up emotions. Emotions are the lubricant to perception authorship. It's, it's the state of being that you need to find yourself in in order to tear down the old mental constructs. Or at least it's the state of being that I need to find myself in. I should say it that way. I'm not telling you at all what it is for you. This is just entirely how it is for me. Now, once I find myself sensing an emotional experience after making a direct observation, I'm very careful. I make sure I bring knowing to my observation and to my emotional experience. And when I've done that, I'm sensing an emotional experience of knowing. I'm seeking at this point. This is what I mean when I say to seek. And then finally, once I've made the observation, I've sensed the emotions, and I'm at a place of knowing. Then I sense an emotional experience of disillusionment. That's my seed. The entire experience for this particular direct observation all the way through to disillusionment, that is my seed. And my seed, the story, my words, that's the brightest light that I have to shine on the world. And I wonder if it's the brightest light that you have to shine on the world, too. What everybody needs to know is, hey, not what is reality. It's, hey, how do we come to a place of knowing for ourselves about what our reality is to us? Because we've got forces out there that are interrupting our perception authorship process. Remember in school the game Simon Says? Well, the Simon is out there, and the Simon is saying a lot of things, and a lot of people are believing what Simon says. They believe that Arabs with box cutters hijacked planes and destroyed buildings on 9-11-2001. Simon Says that surgery, chemo, and radiation are the best treatments for cancer. Simon says the earth is a sphere of rock orbiting the sun. Simon says Hurricane Harvey was a natural event. Simon says the California fires are wildfires that started through normal means. Simon says the courts have our best interests at heart. Simon says real people died at Sandy Hook. Simon says, Wi-Fi radiation is safe. You know, this list goes on and on and on. We've got a full-on assault on our perception authorship process, on our say-op, on the ability for us to author and communicate perception changes. This is important because all of our behavior has its roots in perception.
So here's the flow. You got to start with a direct observation, sense an emotional experience, make sure you're sensing an emotional experience from a place of knowing. And then when you sit in that cocktail of emotions for a while, you will sense an emotional experience of disillusionment. I want to talk about our English language here. We've got an awful lot of confusion going on with the word do, especially just when you listen to the word. I mean, you really don't know, do I pronounce that do, like D-O-O, -O, like a long oo, or is that do? But for now, we're just going to say do. But that is so similar to D-O-O. -O. Or how about counting in French? Un, deux. Close enough. Or how about throwing a U into that word? It changes the meaning of it. Let's spell it this way. D-E-W. Glistening liquid on the grass in the morning time? Hey, when's that library book due? Not only do we have multiple definitions for just one spelling of one word, we've got multiple ways to spell the same phonetics. Our language is garbage, really. It's a bunch of doo-doo is what you end up with. Let's throw another log on the fire here. Let's take a look at some of the common definitions for the word do. I want to start off with the English Oxford's Living Dictionary because the very first definition that they have, do, it means to perform. And in parentheses, an action the precise nature of which is often unspecified. So here we've got a word in a language that's supposed to contain meaning. And if it doesn't contain meaning, why are we using it? And yet, it's just an empty verb. It's a container, and we don't know quite what it is that do is supposed to mean. I mean, we scroll right down here and and it's getting really muddy really quick. It can be to perform, to work on, to do the cleaning for a person's household, to make or have available, to solve, to cook, to work, to learn, to produce, to imitate to take, to attend to, to have sex with, to urinate or defecate, to travel, to make, to achieve, to visit, to spend, to finish, to give up, to act, to make progress. You know, there are multiple dictionaries too. This particular one has 54, yeah, 54 definitions of the word do. I've done some computer programming in my days, and when you program a computer, there's only one meaning assigned to any particular combination of letters and or other ASCII keystrokes or characters. If you misspell a word, you put in an extra semicolon, you leave out a semicolon, this computer just has no idea what you're trying to tell it. It needs things to be exact. And I understand why. We're 
In a sea of observations, we're living in a sea of the totality of all ideas, and we have no, I, no, <laughs> we have no idea how to put all those ideas together to make sense of this. And the fact that one of our most common words, the word do, has 54 meanings just in one dictionary, it's specifically defined in the Oxford Living Dictionary as it's just an action, the precise nature of which is often unspecified. Well, I had an interesting idea fly through my head out of nowhere one day. And that was, it felt like just a hmm, intuition or, this is, I don't know quite how to explain these ideas that come to me. Uh, they just pop into my head out of nowhere. And one day I was sitting in the living room and the idea was the word do stands for direct observation. Go and substitute the idea of direct observation. Anytime you see the word do, and just observe the feeling of that sentence. She knew what she was directly observing. What can I directly observe for you? You know, a really potent question is, Danny, how do you do? How do I, how do directly observe myself Making direct observations is really what that question's asking. And that's what the SEOP is all about. We start with the direct observation and we come to a place of knowing with it. And in the process of that, if we sense an emotional experience we're ripe for reauthoring a perception. Every one of these steps is under assault. Things are hidden in plain sight because often it's impossible to hide the direct observation. But the meaning we assign to it has been bastardized has been manufactured and injected into our consciousness. And we're clueless about it until now. They show us burning houses or decimated houses and the definition that they give to it is wildfires did it. That interrupts our process. Now, in the next installment in this series, we're going to dive deeper into how do we come to a place of knowing after we make an observation. And a little preview, I'm going to use the word look, L-O-O-K, stands for locate, observe, orient, and know. And this is how we are individually each going to pull ourselves out of the gaslighting that the Psyman has shined all around us. I love you guys a lot. Thank you so much for all the emails coming in. If you haven't already done so, check out BZ Riger's YouTube channel. There was a recent, about an hour-long conversation, telephone call that she had with Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe. And the big observations here for me are that Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe is now creating public media again, recorded phone calls with BZ Rager. And she's speaking in general terms about the court case unfolding in Knoxville, Tennessee. The SEOP has a lot of power. Without being at a place of knowing I can about Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe right now and her journey, I can say I suspect that Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe 
when she was working with the banks and with the court systems, she made some observations that kicked her into sensing emotional experiences. And when she dug down further and deeper, she came to a place of knowing. And once she was sure that she knew, she had a seed. And she is telling people about her seed. She started with us, and now she's telling the courts about her emotional experience of disillusionment. And this process takes time. Sometimes it can take years to go from direct observation all the way through seed. But what she's given me are direct observations along with emotional experiences. And when you put those two together, a do see, that's what we call a doozy. Wow. You know, the the videos that I've put up that have gotten the most views in the shortest amount of time, they've all had the pattern of being a doozy. They've brought you a direct observation in such a way that if you have an open mind, you are going to sense an emotional experience and it's going to change you. It's going to challenge the perceptions that you have in place. Our greatest power is to assign meaning to anything and everything within our personal experience. The way that we feel the meaning applies for us in our experience. To grab a hold of the reins of the SEOP and to self-author your own perception in a place of knowing That's what makes you a superhero. That's what gives you connection with your own course corrections from here on out. And we're going to talk a lot more about this. Because I wish it's what I was able to hear. Wow. Ten years ago, when I started consciously seeking truth. Keep your emails coming if you have any more for me. Lunacy, L-U-N-A-S-E-E, at protonmail.com. And I guess I don't have a whole lot to say about the court case going on. Heather and Randy have some conversations out there and they are, they're the ones saying it. We're all of us out here in in the rest of mainstream society and mainstream truth seeking channels. We're the spectators in this, even though ultimately we're involved and affected by the outcome. There's not a whole lot in our court right now to play with. I guess I shouldn't have used the word court. I'm thinking, oh, the ball's in your court. Well, the ball's in, the ball is in the system's court right now. It's on their side of the game field. And they are in the middle of their own do see seek seek process, excuse me, do see seek seed process. And it takes time And a lot of times comes along with such powerful emotions and energy that can't be released any other way than through tears. So I ask Grace to hold them in a protective container of high vibrational light, peace and ease, and allow all of those beings that are wrapped up on all sides of this issue to truly see the light, to connect themselves, their being with their own self-authorship of their own perception. And once that happens, I'm sure if we all just state who we are and what we know, we'll find out that we are one. I love you guys. Bye-bye.